Hello, this is Dr. Ranganathan, senior neurosurgeon, Astaprime Hospital, Amirpet, Hyderabad. Now, there is a problem called bird flu that is making waves in India and also the Telugu states. Bird flu means it's called uh, involving in the of the birds. Flu means influenza, something like fever. In the otherwise known as aviation influenza. It's a viral disease. It's generally seen in uh, poultry, the turkey type of poultry also. And sometimes ducks. It's a viral disease. It's known as H5N1 or H5N8. Though this problem has been known from 1997, the WHO World Health Organization has recognized in 1997 in Hong Kong. Subsequently, in India, the problem has manifested in 2006 in a place called Nawapur in Maharashtra. Luckily, that problem has abated, subsided. The first point everybody needs to know is, luckily, it's not much transmitted to the human beings. And unlike COVID, it's not transmitted from man to man. Then you can ask me why everybody is scared of bird flu. That is an important reason that we'll talk about. The bird flu has come in 2024 in Andhra Pradesh, the other neighboring Telugu state, in a district called Nellore. Of course, the government at that time have taken the, all the precautions. Luckily, no death being recorded in human beings. And from 1st January, and recently, the bird flu has resurfaced, not in Nellore this time, but in West Godavari, Krishna, and Yeluru districts. There are quite a few cases. The government is again alert. Why is this so much alert? Because if it is in the aviation, that is in the birds, why government is so much alert? And the most important thing WHO has said, the death rate because of bird flu is 100 times more than COVID. COVID means we are not scared. Why we are taking COVID as a statistics, what you call measurement is, because COVID time we lost lakhs of people all over the world. But bird flu, though it doesn't directly affect the human beings, if it comes into the human beings, the death rate is 100% more than COVID. Now, all over the world, the WHO statistics are some 866 human beings have been affected. 400 died. So, the death rate percentage is 50%. Isn't it? Whereas in COVID is 3%. And in 2006, when the record, the death rate was what happened in India in a young boy, and that was recorded in 2013 in Ames, Delhi. Subsequently, not many deaths have been recorded. And the problem is, even the, what you call the aviation influenza, why the interest of the government and also the media and the scientific public about and the scare about it. Because there are so many people involved in this aviation, poultry farms, it's a big livelihood. Interestingly, there are three states in the country, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Telangana, who have the largest poultry farms. So naturally, a problem also likely to be here. There are poultry farm farmers, there are workers, there are veterinarians, all these people are affected. And many people like the poultry that is the chicken dish, isn't it? Few people may not eat, but that's a their lookout. And one other reason why the problem is, suppose the chicken is not cooked properly. Eggs, another uh, delicious food. Even the vegetarians enjoy eggs sometimes. That's their choice. If the egg is unhygienic, with the excreta of the birds, that also can cause bird flu. So these are the various reasons. To the extent you can understand this care in Maharashtra, from 1st January this year, 2025, 7,000 poultry birds have been culled. Culling is what is called killing them, selectively. Yes. And around 4,000 or more eggs have been destroyed because of the worry of transmission. Government of Maharashtra have paid to the poultry farmers a compensation of about 4 lakhs. That's the gravity of the situation. 
Recently, Telangana government has put brakes for the supply of the poultry foods from Andhra beyond the borders of Andhra to Telangana because they are worried. Really, in the scientifically, there may not be big substance. The scientists say that if the poultry, that is chicken, is cooked properly and the eggs are washed properly and full boiled egg is safe. I can repeat that. If the chicken is cooked at 70 degrees, which is a very high amount, and the eggs are boiled completely, fully, not half boiled. Many people like half boiled, many people like raw eggs, then there is a risk. So that is the reason very, very much people are worried. Because the leg is such a delicious dish, very commonly, it's everywhere done. So it can transmit. Once the transmission happens, the problem is immense. And I told you the death rate. That is the reason why. Now, the symptoms are simple, like cold, cough, sore throat, fever, body pains. Sometimes leads to if the complication like pneumonia. And rarely, and the bad is I heard this word by name, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, going on to the ventilator, like in the COVID days. Most importantly, as a neurosurgeon, I'm interested in the effect of the brain. Particularly when the bird flu effect is serious, the brain is affected. And it produces what is called encephalitis, called brain inflammation or brain fever, epilepsy, fits, or even sometimes going out to the ventilator. And this generally a problem where there is no treatment specifically. Unlike COVID, there is no vaccine yet because it comes once in a way. But it may be time because of the poultry farms sprawling all over the world. And also in India particularly, people are enjoying their chicken and egg. It may be important that a vaccine also need to come up. That's my session opinion. And once they have come, the tests. The tests are, there is a thing called the PCR, like in the uh, COVID time, you have to polymerase chain reaction. That's the best test to de detect the virus. There is one other called rapid influenza detection test kit. But that is all, this is not specific for only the aviation flu, but other influenza, influenza virus, like routine fever. There is a thing called viral culture. And those who have problems in the chest and all, an X-ray of the chest, or HRCT scan of the chest also may be required. That is the brain part, the investigation part. And the treatment is, there. as I said, there are no specific treatment. There are some antiviral medications now available. Oseltamivir, Peramivir, Tamiflu, that's very trade name of one company. That is supposed to be very effective about this. And the course and all should be started within 48 hours. That is the problem. So the diagnosis as a suspicion of bird flu is very important. Because once it's beyond 48 hours, it's even the best treatment that's not very, very useful. So the problems keeps on coming. And the most important question is who are all at risk of developing uh, this bird flu? Those who are in the, working in the poultry farms and butchers, those, you know it, and then, of course, the veterinary doctors, they are very at, at risk. And those are eating food, rather chicken without cooking properly, or without boiling the eggs properly, or cleaning the eggs properly. And the type of individuals who are at risk are either very old or very young people. And particularly what we are talking about that time of COVID is immunodeficiency, like diabetes, hypertension, organ transplantation, those who have asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, health workers, because they have to go. Somebody has come with a suspected fever, the doctors, the nurses, and the other personnel, they are able to look after, and they are at risk. So how this transmission starts? Suppose there is a infected poultry bird or a dead bird, that is one area of transmission. And in the poultry farms, there are cages. And also there are some equipment to clean other thing. And the, even on the clothes. And third is, of course, by air also. 
the viral particles in the small particles can go through the air into the nose of for people who are in close contact support the poultry farmer he is not wearing a mask he is not taking any using any gloves and the all the eggs and all they are contaminated with the excreta of the birds they are at high risk so what precautions you can take the precaution you have to take here particularly while infected bird or dead birds you should keep away to the extent possible people who have to work in the farms or all they have to wear things like what is called a ppe personal protection equipment gloves goggles or important thing is mask the other precaution is going down to the poultry farms a busy at a open market during the season you should be very careful don't go to the areas where there is a bird flu area already the government of ap has earmarked that area in those districts what i made a mention in west godavari elur and krishna zones where the bird flu cases have been detected within 1 km from the village where the bird flu detected is red zone 1 km to 10 km is what's called surveillance zone and beyond 10 km people can have the normal mobility and exchange of articles whatever it is so these are the system the government is following and important thing is that those people who are in the area around that to go to the area where there is a red zone marked or the surveillance zone there is always a risk so these are the precautions not to travel at the time in the area where there is a bird flu and as a neurosurgeon as i said that nervous system the most important thing is how this nervous system is affected again the immune system comes to the fore the immune system is activated it produces what are called cytokines and chemokinins these aggregate over the brain and there is microglia what are the basic structure of the brain they aggregate the proteins aggregate they destroy the tissue and produce all the neurological deficits it's also known recently particularly and the effect of this virus is seen the virus may be gone but the effect is seen this called hit and run the virus has hit it virus is gone but the effect is seen on the brain in the form of a few people developing a loss of brain area important area of the brain called atrophy leading to even parkinson's disease where the dopamine cells are affected and even alzheimer's disease then because of the brain atrophy so we wish not that these complications manifest to people as of now luckily the human beings are very less affected we hope and pray that same thing should continue but still the precautions are mandatory and wearing a mask particularly as i said the veterinarians the people who are in proximity with the birds proximity who are who we call in the open markets because that is their livelihood we cannot say that you don't so better wear the glove and be hygienic wash your hands clearly before going taking the food and wearing a mask is not banned in that area at least there is no compulsion from the government of andhra pradesh or anywhere about the wearing of the mask and all these precautions if you take and all the chances of bird flu transmitting to human beings will be least thank you ladies and gentlemen